Uh, the, you talk about inten- intensity. That's a, a real intense guy right there. But um, it's I love it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm used to this area. It's a little farther from where I'm used to, but um, definitely just the whole Bay vibe is – is love, you know, they show love out here, and especially being a writer. So it's it's very, very interesting coming from a, a big historic uh, organization like the Cowboys. So, I mean, I'm enjoying it so far. Do you give Derek any, any hassle about, about the interception? Yeah, absolutely, I do. Uh, he's always talking about go dogs, and I'm like, yeah okay. Well, let's talk about the, that that interception. We 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 sealed it with. But um, no, he, I was just uh, I was just talking about the relationship we had. Uh, just going to the Mountain West Media Days and uh, meeting them there and stuff, and then being across as opponents and now we teammates. So I mean, we we definitely have a good relationship, and I I think that chemistry is going to help us, especially on the field. John Gruden, someone you're familiar with, Rich Passaccia. He's not exactly using his librarian voice out there. Yeah, right. No, I actually, I just, uh, I was sitting back during team run uh, period, and Coach Passaccia was standing there behind Gruden when when he was going off, and I just looked at Coach Passaccia and I was like, like it, it makes sense. <laughs> like I get it now, and he was like, Yeah, you get it, huh? And I was like, Yeah. So um, it's it's funny because they're they're two peas in a pod and and just that relationship and then they they definitely uh, you can see it completely. So there, there are certain coaches who are streamers but don't necessarily know how to get the best out of their players. John and Rich both have the reputation of knowing how to get the best out of their players. How do they use their similar temperaments to be effective? I think it's just how genuine they are in. Uh, I think that their coaching styles are are real intense because they care about about what they're doing and they care about their players and I think that's a, a lot of a lot of things that the NFL can lack at times because it is such a business that coaches can't really break that barrier of, of being a business and just treating you like a piece of meat, you know what I'm saying? And um, that's definitely one thing that Coach Gruden and uh, Basaccia, they really tap into is just that that interpersonal relationship because while he's yelling at you and, and getting on you 24-7, I mean, that's just his way of – of showing that he loves you and and he he sees the potential in you to actually be a great football player. So if he's not yelling at you, then you know something's wrong. Like then he doesn't really believe in you. So um, I think that just their coaching styles are just just how how genuine they love the the game. So have you watched any tape at all of uh, of John Ritchie in this offense back in the day when Gr- when Gruden was here the last time and. Richie was the fullback and had the bloody forehead and the lead blocker. Are you, you very aware of him at all? I, I wasn't too too uh, familiar with, it. and just now being a Raider, like I definitely hear his name a lot and stuff, and hear how crazy he was. So um, it's just interesting. I haven't gotten a chance to uh, to really watch former Raiders as much, but uh, just in I've I've watched a lot of um, um, Coach Cable's guys and stuff just in the the whole scheme. So. But I'm definitely going to tap into just the, the historic fullback just because, I mean, they kind of paved the way. You know, I I, I came up in, in Dallas where it was all about Moose Johnson over there. So yeah. I had to watch watch some stuff on him just to get familiar. But I, it definitely is. I'm, I'm about to go check him out because it would be a good perspective on, on just – the past, because he, you know, Gruden trying to bring bring back that that smash mouth football, and and that's that's what I mean. Us fullbacks like to do. And so. fullbacks in, in some offenses are they don't have really a place for them, but it's obvious that John thinks fullbacks are important and wants to use them. Was right. that, how appealing was that? Oh, it was what? Like I I almost say I exp- I spoke this into existence just because. Uh, hearing all the hype of him coming back and how he talked about fullbacks and I, me being on my contract, yeah, I didn't really know how things were going to play out because I was restricted and whatnot. But um, it was just kind of a dream come true just because now he's really a guy who who really 
values that position, you know what I'm saying? And and for me to be in a position to be that guy for him, it just it gives me that much more motivation to be my best. When did you when did you start feeling like a fullback? I mean, obviously linebacker your whole college career start started out in the NFL playing linebacker. When did you kind of take to this position and kind of finally get your mentality into that into that side of the ball? Um, it was it was probably uh the first time I actually touched the rock like got a carry in in Dallas because like, like it was just not as natural for me you know to get the ball instead of go get the ball so um it took it took a second to just get used to like okay this is this is my way of life now you know what I'm saying but I think I still keep the same mentality of of that linebacker mentality always out to attack and and hit somebody and I think that works to my advantage at the same time but I feel like I'm still young in my career at fullback, so I'm still learning too. And so it's good to have uh, coaches who have a lot of experience with fullbacks. You, you guys haven't put on pads yet, but did, is there a level of excitement there given that you have a couple of pro bowlers on that interior line and you have big backs like Lynch and Martin behind oh, yeah. you? Are you excited about what you guys are going to be able to do as an interior running it? Yeah, I mean, you know, you. Everybody can be all stars in shorts, you know what I'm saying, right now in these OTAs and stuff. But just the the whole hype and aura behind um, Gruden's plans of of going back to this Smash Mouth run game, and and that's kind of what we branch from is the run game. It's exciting because I mean that means I'm gonna be hitting more people and and getting more play time. So. Um, just I think that's going to be big for us is is just establishing the run and and making some noise with them pads. I'm not sure how much you knew but what has been your impression so far of Doug Martin and how does he sort of fit that kind of running game that you guys are trying to play? Uh, Doug Doug's a great player, you know what I'm saying? Um, he's just he's just a, a natural running back, and you see him out there uh, in OTAs and stuff. He just moves like a, a running back, like he was born to do it. So. It's it's fun having a lot of guys that that have this the experience and and know what it what it feels like to have some success and working towards that success and, and stuff and and doing that this this off season and OTAs and stuff. So um, it's exciting. Just we got a, a nice little stable back there. I know you don't have the point of reference of what last season's locker room was like, but being one of the veterans team added this offseason and there's other veterans there as well like Jordy Nelson you mentioned Doug mm -hmm. do you see anything in terms of the other new arrivals just and maybe as one of them kind of take it upon yourself to instill something in the sense of culture and work ethic and those sorts of qualities yeah I think I think a lot of us came from more successful uh organizations and teams and whatnot and I think that 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 value is is overlooked sometimes just because a lot of teams that are struggling it really st stems from the locker room and having a, a strong stable locker room is definitely critical just because this is a way of life you got to do this every day you're around these guys more than your family sometimes so uh, if you don't get along then that's just going it's going to damage us in the end but I think that uh the team, the the guys that are here already, I think they just embraced us, new guys and newcomers, uh, with with open arms. So I think that j that's just helping us because they kind of like, you know, they they could be like, y'all the new guys, like y'all ain't gonna come out come in here and do all this, get all this play time and whatnot. It could they could put a barrier, up, but I don't think anybody has done that. I think we all are in it together and we're working towards some Kyle some Wilber, special. Ryan. Kyle Wilber, Ryan Switzer, two guys that you're familiar with from Dallas, a lot of you know, experience on special teams. What, what do those two bring from your vantage point? Uh, just I think special teams is is a lot a lot about experience and trust because I mean it's, there's a, especially with Basaccia, he has a a, a a pretty hefty uh playbook so um he's all about trust and if he doesn't trust you to do your job then then he, you're not going to be on the field and i think that's one one thing that they bring is is uh consistency 
And and Kyle's a great leader, especially within the special teams uh, side. Even if he's not playing defense, he's, he's a vocal vocal dude, and he's really a, a guy of example. And um, so he's he's out here holding holding everybody accountable, just like just like we are. So um, it's exciting, especially playing next to one of my brothers. I've I've been for the past four years, so. Um, it's exciting having some some familiar faces.